All right, you got what you wanted. Guys, after numerous requests, finally, Pure Passage offers Hajj. Experience the divine journey of Hajj, the most significant act of worship in Islam, performed on behalf of your loved ones by Pure Passage. Hajj is not only a spiritual obligation for every Muslim, but also a symbol of unity, peace and submission to Allah's will. Our devoted team of experienced sheikhs and students of knowledge will take on this holy pilgrimage on behalf of your family members who are unable to undertake this once-in-a-lifetime journey. Our exclusive Hajj package includes the performance of the Hajj rituals, a detailed video report of the journey and a commemorative certificate marking the completion of this spiritual obligation. Don't miss out on this unique opportunity. Let our team take on this journey for you while honoring their legacy and providing you with peace of mind. Join us in the spiritual journey and leave a legacy that will last for eternity. Be'ith me love. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, yes, we're going to continue with the Prophet series. Today, Ibrahim salam, in Babylon. Khalilullah. I asked you in the last video if you want me to continue with all the parts of Ibrahim. So today, this is part two. Let me know again in the comment section if you want me to react to part three. All right, guys, with no further ado, let's have a look. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa la amma ba'd. Father of the Prophets, one of the five greatest messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim in English, Abraham. And he is the second most beloved creation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the jinn and the ins. The Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam was born at a time when there were no believers in Allah. Idolatry had spread across all of humanity. He is Ibrahim, the son of Azar. Ibrahim was born in Babylon, Babel in Iraq. Allah places him in the household of one of the worst people in the entire city of Babylon. He is born in the household of the idol maker, whose name is Azar. Father of Ibrahim salam, Azar, basically he was an idol worshipper. Not only was he an idol worshipper, he was in business with the idols as well. Grew up in an environment and selling them. where he sees his father Early in the morning, goes and makes different idols and statues for people to come and worship. For Ibrahim السلام, rejected that concept from a young age. And that's why Ibrahim, when his father used to send him out to sell the idols, it's been narrated that he used to go past the river and he used to drown the idols, put them in the river and say, save yourself. Swim, you're drowning, do something. You can't even save yourself, how are you going to save me? And he challenged his own father in the most polite... Very interesting yet again, because we didn't hear this backstory in Christianity. And I do not think that there is such a backstory in Judaism either. It is only Islam that explains what kind of character Prophet Ibrahim had. Of manners, as the Quran tells us, Ya Abati, oh my dear father, how can you worship this idol? Oh my dear father, what, why would you worship that which can neither hear nor see? Oh my dear father, this is a rock and a stone. Man, the longer I am Muslim, the clearer it becomes it is so simple it is so straightforward it is so rational of course why would you worship or quote-unquote venerate certain icons certain statues or certain people even they cannot even save themselves how will they save you it makes no sense and harm you why do you not turn it's to so the creator clear of Islam, all man. oh my father verily there has come to me of knowledge that which came not unto you so follow me i will guide you to a straight path Oh my respectable dear father, honorable father, my dear father, don't listen to, don't worship shaitan. Shaitan is surely disobedient to the most merciful. I am afraid if you carry on like this, then even the most merciful won't have mercy upon you and he'll punish you. 
but sadly his father responds back in a very harsh manner. He says, Oh Ibrahim, do you have no desire for my gods? He says, if you don't stop, then I will definitely stone you. I will kill well, you by stoning you. What was the response of Ibrahim Alayhi And it's natural, of course, that the father does not want to listen to the son. He said, Peace be unto you. I will ask Allah to forgive you. He is unto me our most gracious. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and Ibrahim's invoking of Allah for his father's forgiveness was only because of a promise he Ibrahim made to his father. But when it became clear to him that he is an enemy of Allah, he disassociated himself from him. Oh. Ibrahim made dawah to his people also. So he asks them a question. Do they hear you when you're calling out to them? Can they benefit you in any way or can they harm you in any way? They neither said yes, nor did they say no. They kept quiet, but they answered him in a different way. What did they say? They said, we found our forefathers worshipping them. Oh, wow, man. Hmm? I'm really getting goosebumps listening to this because this is truly what I experienced within my own life. Every single time I would ask family, friends, extended family or what not. Why do we kiss icons? Why do we celebrate certain so-called saints? Nobody could ever give me a straightforward answer. It was always about tradition. My father did this. My grandfather did this. Nobody had an explanation. And of course they wouldn't because it is simply not rational. Why would you ever worship anything besides God and this is why those people had no answer either when they got asked by Ibrahim who is going to buy from me that which cannot harm no benefit so at that young age he used to say that Ibrahim so Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam makes mention of even more questions he says you see these things that you people are worshipping you and your forefathers that you have been worshipping all along all of these things that you've been worshipping for so many years, they are all, including yourselves, enemies of mine. There is only one that I worship and that is Rabbul Alameen, the Lord of all the worlds, the creator, wow. whoever Imagine made everything here, that is whom I worship. The one who created Just me. proclaiming this in the midst of his own people. Imagine, imagine this courage. So he will guide wow. me. And the one who feeds me and provides me with the drink. And if I became ill, he is the one who cures me, the one who will make me die and the one who will give me life. This is the God that I worship. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah gave him the That's guidance right. at a very young age. When he started questioning, some narrations say his age was only seven. And then Ibrahim alayhi salam said silently to himself, he was speaking to himself, by Allah, I shall plot a plan to destroy your idols after you have gone away and turn your backs. These people, they had a day in which they would go out of the town and they would celebrate. So they came to Ibrahim and told him, come on, let's go. He said, I am ill. He wasn't physically ill, but he meant is that I am sick of what you are doing. <laughs> they understood that he means that he is physically ill. So they allowed him to stay. So they left him alone thinking that he is ill and they all went out of town. Wow. And Ibrahim is alone. So what he then does is that he makes his way towards the temple. All alone, young boy with an axe in his hand. He goes to the temple and he also takes some food and he takes some water. He goes right in front of the idols and he says to, the, to idol number one, he says, Hey, hey, here, eat, eat. So when he doesn't eat, when he doesn't drink, he takes his axe and wah! <laughs> and he smashes all of the idols and while he's doing so... That's amazing, but I have an honest question, guys. What happens in a Buddhist country, let's say, you have people reverting to Islam. They realize that idol worship is wrong. Would it be justifiable, Islamically speaking, if those new Muslim reverts now would attack the statues of the Buddhists? Please let me know in the comment section. Asking the idols, why can't you defend yourself? And he smashes all of the idols except for one. He leaves the biggest idol standing and then he hangs the axe on the shoulder of this idol. And the people, they come running back. And they were shocked to see the idols being destroyed and demolished. What happened to our Lord? Being destroyed? So they start to ask around, who committed such an evil crime? Who had the guts, who had the encouragement to do such a bad crime like this? Our idols being destroyed? So one of them said, 
there is no one else except that young man that we used to always hear him speak bad about our idols. It's Ibrahim. That young man at the time, Ibrahim <laughs> alayhi salam, was only 16 years old. That's a really old. funny story. Man. And he took on the whole nation single handedly. So Allah says, Ibrahim was a man, one man, but he was equivalent to a whole nation. What a young man, 16 years old. So they said, he was bring so him here right now in front of everybody and we're going to question him. So they brought Ibrahim alayhi salam in front of Ifran. And they told him, Oh Ibrahim, Oh Ibrahim, are you the one that did this to our lords? So Ibrahim alayhi salam with full wisdom and smartness. And look at the intellect of Ibrahim alayhi salam. He says, why don't you ask them? This is the biggest one of them. This is the most able of them. This is the greatest of them. Ask him, he will tell you what happened. He's got the axe in his hands. He probably the one that did it. These people, <laughs> as soon as they hear this response from this child, they come back and they look at the idol. And then they look at Ibrahim alayhi salam. And then they look at the idol. And then they look at Ibrahim alayhi salam. They say, Ibrahim, what are you saying? Are you making fun of us? You know that don't speak, and you know that don't hear, and you know that you know that don't listen. So Ibrahim said, "I'm making fun of you, or you're making fun of yourself." He just said, "They don't hear, they don't listen, they don't see, they don't respond." Then what do you worship them for? Subhanallah, he wanted to make this point. And he definitely did make this point because yet again, this is the rationality of Islam. It is quite fascinating, of course, because nowadays you have many atheists claiming that religion is irrational and that only atheism is a rational path, evolution, Darwinism, etc., etc., you name it. But that, of course, depends which religions we are talking about. What is irrational about the thought that one eternal, almighty creator created everything around you? He is all-powerful, all-seeing. What is irrational about this? Is it more rational to believe that everything came out of nothing? Of course not. Only Islam provides a rational worldview. Then he says, Ibrahim says, then do you worship instead of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that which does not benefit you or does not harm you? Ibrahim nothing. Does them nothing. This Just was a, a shock to them. So for a moment they woke up and realized their insanity and their mistake and their foolishness. So but they started to think in. about their position. But then Shaitan came in with his influence and his whispers. So he made them override that thought. And they went back to their ignorance again. And they said this man, this young man had committed a severe crime and he must pay a severe punishment for it. Yes, so this absolute human nature, aka the nature of the ego, of course, when people fall back into their preconceived notion of society. First they realize, hey, this is the truth, but then they discard it because of their ego, because of shaitan ultimately, and they come back to their social construct. Hmm, what do we do with him now? We have to punish him. One of them said, make a Always fire said. and burn him. Burn him wow. and support your gods if you are going to do something. Or well, all of those people combined, they gather the firewood and they build an enormous fire, Ikhwani. And they set fire to it and the flames were so high that it would a bird would fly over it and fall down dead. They have to build a catapult to throw, to launch Ibrahim alayhi salam into the fire. Because it's not possible to get close enough to it because this fire is so big. So they build a catapult. <coughs> they then got Ibrahim alayhi salam, he was all tied up in ropes and chains and they put him into a catapult and they released the catapult. And Ibrahim alayhi salam is airborne and he's flying towards the fire and he's going very fast and right there something amazing happens. The Mufassirin said at that moment time stopped. Ibrahim is in the middle of the air. Angel Jibreel appears before him, says Ibrahim, Allah and His angels are with you. Anything you like, ask me and I will, I will make it happen for you. Do you need any help? And look at the level of Iman of this child. He says, Allah knows my situation. I don't need to ask you for anything. Go ahead, you know, leave me alone. Allah knows. Jibreel salam says, are you sure? He says, yes. This is the heart of Ibrahim alayhi salam, so attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even in a moment. 
ask help from anyone and anything, Jibreel will come to him and say to Ibrahim in that moment that Ibrahim has no one except Allah who say to him, Oh Ibrahim, do you need help? He says, From you, no, but from Allah, yes. And he then he says, Hasbunallah wa na'mal wakil. Hasbunallah wa na'mal wakil. Allah is enough for me and he is the best disposer of affairs. Ibrahim alayhi salam landed in the fire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the fire because the fire is a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As everything fire, is. Be coolness and safety for Ibrahim. So immediately, if someone is tied up with, with chains and ropes, for the fire to be a means of peace, it had to burn the ropes and chains. So now he was released. And as he's released, he goes in there and he felt so comfortable later on. He makes mention in his life that the best time that I've ever spent during my lifetime was that time that I was in the fire. <laughs> and then he walks out of that fire very calmly. As he walks out, they're just shocked looking at him. That really reminds me of action movies when the hero runs through the fire. They don't know. <laughs> so one young man gets up and he decides, I want to follow you. You are right. These people are wrong. Allahu Akbar. Young man. Who was this young man? His nephew. Lut alayhi salatu wasalam. The prophet Lut, he was not yet a prophet. He was a young, young boy. After this event happened, the king of Babylon at that time was a Nimrud. Nimrod. So Nimrod heard about this young man who performed this miracle. Who is he? Bring him forward. So they brought Ibrahim alayhi salam, this young man to debate with the king. And Nimrod, the powerful dictator, Tyrant and Nimrud. There were people who used to worship this king. He used to call himself a god. So the king says, Who is the one you worship, O Ibrahim? Ibrahim salam says, My god is the one who gives life and death. Can you do that? Nimrud said, Yes, I can give life and I can take it away. Sure. How? How? He said, Call two people from jail. So they brought these two men from jail. He commanded his soldiers to execute one of them. And he told the second one, you are free. He said, see, I took away the life of this one and I gave life to wow. the other one. Ibrahim didn't mean this foolish, a shallow meaning of giving life and death. Ibrahim was talking about the miracle of life, which is occurring in they every get single moment of the day and night. Ibrahim did not respond to this. Ibrahim completely changed the subject. And since he saw that this man is stubborn and he is going to debate and dialogue with this way and argue in this fashion, I am going to get him from another angle. Then Ibrahim said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings the sun from the east, bring it from the west. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so the disbeliever was utterly defeated. He couldn't speak. He was defeated completely. Imagine a, a young man, Shab, telling a king, Without fear. Why? Because he had a kalbun. Honestly, listening to this video is really mind-blowing, even though it is so simple. Yet again, if you guys grew up as Muslim, for you this is absolute common sense. However, when you grow up in a different worldview, be it Buddhism, Hinduism, or like myself in Christianity, certain things you cannot take for granted. Because those simple questions, hey, can you make the sun appear from the west? Can you give life? Etc. Etc. All of those things are scattered in a world view where you don't have pure monotheism, where you don't have Tawheed. Many people attribute powers to certain cross necklaces or to certain icons or then, as mentioned in this video, to idols. So Islam has this unbelievable depth implemented in simplicity. And I'm of the firm conviction that the truth is always simple. It is a simple truth that anybody can grasp. However, that truth, of course, implies a lot of depth. And this is only found within Islam. Because if we're talking about Trinity, for example, the Trinity is not simple at all. It presents itself as something extremely complex. But where is the depth within it? The depth, yet again, will be discarded as some sort of mystery. It appears complex. 
it appears confusing and it ultimately is because there is no true depth in it. The explanation is there is a father, there is a son, there is a Holy Spirit, they love each other, etc., etc., you name it. But only in La ilaha illallah you have such a beautiful, simple statement that carries the deep truth. Salim, he had a clean heart, solid. He knew nothing can harm me besides Allah. And remember when Ibrahim said, السلام, My Lord, show me how you give life to the dead. He, Allah said, do you not believe? He, Ibrahim said, yes, I believe, but to be stronger in my faith. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Ibrahim السلام, to grab four birds and to slaughter those four birds. And after being slaughtered, to chop them into pieces and mix all the pieces together and put all the different pieces onto different mountains. Then when you're standing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, then call them and see what happens. They will come flying back to you. Allahu Akbar. So he did that and then he called the birds and he started watching these birds. Amazing. When he started watching these birds, they flew back to him when he called. And then Allahu Akbar, Allah says, and you should know that Allah is all powerful, all wise. This is a young boy. His Iman in Allah has now been strengthened one after the other. Nobody believed in him except his nephew Lut and they had to leave. They had to flee from the persecution and the oppression of their homeland. They had to give up the land of their birth and the land they were raised up and go and find another land to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and we rescued him and Lut to the land which we have blessed for the mankind for the world. And the blessed land is the holy land, Asha. On the way, he passed through a land called Harwan in Asha. Inshallah, we will see what happens in Harwan. Inshallah. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. Long enough as it is, I'm going to cut it off here. As I said throughout the video, this is the profound, deep, but yet again, simple message of Islam that you cannot find in any other religion. I challenge you, please present your case. Please show us the evidence why we should let go of Tawheed and swap it for Trinity. The Christians say that the Trinity is the truth. How can that be? Why would I have to worship three in one? Or even worse than that, why would I have to venerate icons? Or why would I have to worship idols? How do those things hold power over God? The simple answer is they do not. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel by Patreon, for example, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.